Here we go. The Cards and the Cubs. First pitch of the game brought to you by Domino's. A strike to Alfonso Soriano. The Cubs left fielder is hitting 280 with 12 home runs, 25 RBIs. It's 75 degrees here at Bush. Sinker, sinker, sinker. Let's hope it's working. That's right. It was good. First couple pitches to him as he kept him down in the order. Got off to the great start, but he's lost his last couple. There's a liner out to left and playing deep was Duncan, so it's a leadoff base hit for Soriano. Who's tried to make a concerted effort to steal bases again this year in 09. A look at this lineup, even with some injuries, still loaded. Soriano, Terrio, and Kukadome, who's had a bounce back season. Derek Lee against the Cardinals, very good, above 300 average. Bill Bradley, Mike Fontenot, Giovanni Soto, Aaron Miles, the switch hitter, former Cardinal, and then Ted Lilly is batting ninth for the Chicago Cubs. Here's Ryan Terrio, their shortstop. He's hitting 294 with five home runs, 18 RBIs, and the five home runs certainly out a big surprise. A little power there. Well, he hit one home run a year ago, so that's what you're talking about, the surprise. And 20 RBIs off of last year's total. DeRosa gone. He's with Cleveland now, so it opened up a spot for Terrio. They signed Miles and expected him to play a lot, too. And, you know, when with Ramirez comes back, it's another big RBI bat in the middle of this lineup. You know, the one thing is well documented in all the troubles the Cardinals are having. But the one thing that is hard to explain, you can understand why the offense is missing, but it's hard to explain why the starting pitching has been so poor in May. Rotation is two and nine this month. Twice they have only gone more than six innings. That has got to be a concern for Dave Duncan, the lack of innings from his starters. Lack of innings. All of a sudden they're elevating the ball. People are hitting the ball out of the ballpark against them. They always give up an awful lot of hits and strike out very few. One ball, one strike on Ryan Terrio and a check on Soriano. Quick move over there. And Soriano back in safely. I mentioned he's trying to make a concerted effort this year to run a little bit more and try to be truly a leadoff man for Chicago. Well, he's a great leadoff or kind of the modern day leadoff as he his tie with Biggio for the most leadoff home runs in history. He's at second all time. I named Ricky Henderson was pretty good yeah, at doing that. Ricky had 81, Biggio and Soriano 53. Now some people feel that for Lou Pinella to have success, he would be better served to move Soriano down in the lineup. I'm not sure I agree with that anymore. I agree with you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> I like Soriano at the top of my lineup. Well, you know, to uh, Tony likes that power in the two hole, but if you can get it from your leadoff man. Throw down to first. He got it. Picked him off. Remarkable. Yadier Molina does it again. Soriano may have an argument here. Let's take a look. I just don't think he can make it this close. You, know, you can't tell where his hand is from this angle, but you can here. See if his fingers do get to the bag. Oh, I think he's out. I do too. I think he may have just I got th the tips yep. of the fingers. He got up on the shoulder before those fingertips got to the bag. 2-2 two -two pitch. And a ground ball backhanded by Brian Barden. And he makes the play. Not only do you take Soriano off the base pass, but it, it just feels like a momentum boost when there hasn't been a lot of positive things going on. You can't emphasize enough as a pitcher, when you're out there and all of a sudden, you know, you give up a lead up hit and everything, but then a defensive play behind you, boy, that picks you up. It really does. Cardinals defense presented by Auto Tire, Duncan Rasmus, Stabanoa, Barton, Ryan Thurston, full holes on the infield, the battery tonight, Pinheiro, and Yadier Molina, who's now closing in on 30 pickoffs in his career. Resurgence of sorts for Kosuke Fukudome. Last year, first half of the season, very good. The second half was poor. And even at one point, Lou Pinella had to bench him in the playoffs. One ball, one strike with two outs. Derek Lee is batting cleanup. And you'll notice missing from this lineup, Aramis Ramirez with a separated shoulder. That's a big loss. A big loss because you can always pencil in 100 RBIs for Ramirez. So everyone, you know, kind of moving out of their rotation. You know, he's like a two number two hitter. Uh, Lupinella trying to plug the gap and 
in May they have because they've always gotten consistent pitching. A liner on a hop, Brendan Ryan. Long throw and hit by Pools. How about the defense here in the top of the first by the Cardinals? Brendan Ryan backing up on the outfield grass and a nifty play and a nifty pick from the former Gold Glover Pools. Just moments ago, Tony La Russa exchanging lineup cards with the Chicago Cubs and with the umpires. The umpires tonight, Jerry Davis, who called St. Louis home for a number of years, Brian Gorman, C.B. Buckner, and Mike Everett. Veteran crew here tonight. Jerry Davis, as you said, a St. Louis and then moved to Appleton, Wisconsin. I believe that's the town. He wanted to warm up. <laughs> Ted Lilly, this guy has been very good. He doesn't walk many. Matter of fact, only nine walks in his seven starts and opponents hitting 227 against him. Those numbers presented by Marshall Wireless. He's won 32 games in his first two years with the Cubs. 15 the first year, 17 last year, career high. And he's been worth every penny to that four year contract. I guess part of it would have to be that, you know, he was pitching over in the American League East, which just would wear you out with Boston and New York. He was with Toronto at the time. Comes over to the NL Central. You're facing a pitcher, no DH, lesser payrolls, and maybe lesser teams to an extent. You know, a lot of people kind of question the kind of money that the Cubs paid him, but nobody questions that anymore. What a great deal it's been. 3 1 pitch and a leadoff walk. Well, you rarely see that with Ted Lilly. A look at the Cardinals lineup, which. The last four weeks is hitting under 200 against lefties. Brendan Ryan, Colby Rasmus, and Albert Pujols. Then you have Molina, Duncan, and Stavanoa, Martin, Pinheiro, and Thurston. With this lineup, I think you could have maybe made the case. It's always fun to break down lineups, but you could have made the case that you know, Tyler Green make a start and shift Brendan Ryan over to second base if you wanted another righty in that lineup. Louis, and that would make perfect sense in the sense that Louie is extremely tough on left handed batters. And you have to believe that his ability to change speeds will really carve up young hitters. That's what we saw with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers, the veterans, the former Cardinals like Supon and Looper. A lot of off speed pitches the last three nights. And uh, that was a difference in, the, in those games. And when you get a first pitch fastball, you better be ready to jump on it. As we saw there with Colby. And he wasn't. Rasmus with three home runs, batting 248, 13 RBIs. Lilly working from the third base side and a bunt. And Lilly only play is to go to first. But Tony La Russa, though, noting that this would probably be a tough, tough assignment of this lineup against Lilly, batting the pitcher eight. 
Soriano, Fukudome, and Milton Bradley in the outfield. Botno, Terrio, Miles Lee along the infield. And the battery tonight, Lily and Giovanni Soto. Auto tire defense. And he'll use that pitcher eighth when he thinks it may be a little hard to score runs. And based on what we've seen from the Cardinal offense and what we know about Ted Lilly, that's probably a pretty fair assumption. Albert has had good numbers against Lilly, but they can pitch around him. First pitch to Albert, a breaking ball and a strike. A batting cleanup tonight. Molina, he's been in a little bit of a funk as well, hitting just to now 291 as he's below that 300 mark. Brendan Ryan, the runner at second base. Outfield very deep. And a fastball quickly 0-2. He will challenge you with fastballs, but you kind of get surprised by it. Sneaky fast, and you're always thinking about trying to throw a breaking ball, especially when it had in the count. Runs created leaders. Their Firestone leaderboard. Pool holes at 34. He's driven in 37. In the dirt, Soto keeps it in front. One ball and two strikes. Crowd still filing in. Big, big crowd here for game one of this series. The center fielder is really, really deep, and that's Fukudome. That's about as deep as you can play. Yes, and rarely does a ball get over a center fielder's head when he's that deep and not go out of the ballpark. So there's a lot of hits and a lot of space in between in front of him. One and two the count on Albert Pools. Off speed pitch missed outside two and two really took something off that it's 68 miles an hour. I think Albert really has been trying to do too much with the absence of Ankiel and Ludwig. You know it's only human nature that you try to you know put the whole team on your back but you know you can't he's not capable. A few hits he's got have been producing but he's not hitting like Albert Pujols. 2 2 pitch. Pujols pops it up. Soto with a play. Foul territory makes the catch. He went down to get it and popped it up. Two away and it brings in Molina. You can see, but he changed to a lob wedge. <laughs> Down and in, is out in front, gets underneath it, pops it up. Kind of get Yachty going. Well, you have to find some type of protection with these guys out of the lineup like Ann Keel and Ludwig. And whether it's Molina or Duncan, but somebody has to get going to give Pujols a little protection. Yachty's two for his last 17. Two outs runner at second. First two Molina. Taken for a ball inside on deck Chris Duncan. Molina hitting 291. Three home runs and he's driven in 15 on the year. Highest winning percentages in the month of May. The Cubs are third best. They're 11 and four. Third best in all the baseball. The Cardinals now are 22nd here in the month of May. They're five and nine. Cubs 11 and four the best team and a surprise for many the Texas Rangers at 13 and three. Could must not be comfortable going back on a ball to play that deep. It's one thing with pools it's another with Molina. I mean I guess you could sit there and say make a case for it with Albert. You know you think he's going to hit one deep anyway but Molina a lot of times it's the ball that he guides into right center those line drives. They're having trouble getting together here so conversation. Cardinals are happy to see Milwaukee get out of town. Brewers now have won nine of ten here at the new Bush Stadium dating back to last year. And also the last two years, the Cardinals 5 and 13 against Milwaukee. And the problem is that's one of the teams that you're going to have to beat. And we, we talked about how Pittsburgh has been beaten 17 straight times by Milwaukee. So, you know, that's play 500, and they've got a big uh, jump on you. 
One and zero. The count on Molina with two outs and a runner at second base. Here it comes. Ryan is off with the pitch and steals it. Not even a throw, and the third baseman not even close to the bag. Third steal of the year for Brendan Ryan. It was interesting as you see the high leg kick. Brendan Ryan gets a good jump. Soto goes to throw, but you see, you know, Fontenot just kind of raises his hands like, hey, let him have it. There's two outs. You work on the hitter, they can't score. The strike at the knees, two and two. Pittsburgh leading Washington five to one. Phillies have jumped out. Ahead of Cincinnati two to one that's in the fifth it oh, looked like it was right down the middle and Molina politely was asking where it was. Saw those hits by direction for Molina and a center field base hit. Playing deep with the domain wouldn't get it. And Yadier Molina two out base hit. One to nothing Cardinals. Cardinals have accomplished something already here tonight that they did not do in the entire Milwaukee series and that's have a lead two out base hits that's what you need when you're struggling and it's got to be one of these veterans that got to just somebody's got to pick up the slack you'd love to have some of these rookies do it but Yachty who's picked up so many clutch hits comes through and now it's Duncan Soto setting up on the outside portion of the plate Lily misses in a couple of things about that base hit I don't think Fukudome would get it if he's playing in, no. playing closer in. But if Brendan Ryan doesn't take third base and Fukudome is closer in, we're got a we're probably looking at a bang bang play at the plate. Well, you know, Kendall's going to send him, and I would bet that Brendan Ryan would be safe. Lily has a very good move over to first, and that was not the good one. Well, I think the Cubs are doing the right thing, playing behind Molina. And he's getting a little frisky out there as he's jockeying around. And he'll be careful. Or he'll get uh, picked off out there. We'll put in perspective how good Ted Lilly has been. He's 23 and 7 since last May. Carlos Zambrano is 13 and 6. And he's their ace. Can he stay healthy, though? On the DL right now. I wonder why Lily is concerned with Molina. Because Molina has gotten into his head by jockeying around out there, moving around. But like you said, the two outs work on the hitter. Don't worry about him. He's not going any place. Lee is actually playing behind Molina. The more you pay attention to that runner out there, you split your concentration and the likelihood of making a mistake at the plate is greater. One and two. Dave McKay helping out Yadi Molina at first. And McKay is a guy that tells you if somebody gets picked off at first, he says it's his fault. Off speed pitch. Duncan strikes out. But the Cardinals pick up the RBI single with two outs from Molina. One nothing.
you know, you get a walk, then you sacrifice him in the scoring position. Hey, you got a good jump. You're not paying attention, so steal third. And then the greatest thing of all, the two-out base hit. Demoralizes the opposition and gives you that lead. Here's Derek Lee, who's hitting just 226, four home runs, 18 RBIs. Been dealing with a bulging disc in his neck. Those numbers tell you he's not right because he is a fantastic player and hitter. Very good, you know, former batting champion, clutch performer, and just not right. Cardinals in the first couple of the series against the Cubs were very aggressive with Lee in particular with the fastball. They went right at him. One and two. And hard to explain, but he's only four for 37 on the road. Just over 100. A little bit low, two balls and two strikes. We saw that slow, tantalizing breaking ball from Ted Lilly. And he said every year it's getting slower and slower <laughs> and slower. By design, though. That's right. And, and he was explaining it to some folks a couple of weeks ago, and he said, look, it's coming in about 68 miles an hour. It's tantalizing. And it looks, you know, my next pitch, if it's a ball, looks like it's about 95. It's a, it's a very good point. It's just that art of pitching, and then you could throw it at a couple different speeds. Round ball up the middle and a base hit for Derek Lee. The second hit for the Cubs tonight. Let's take a look at our Toyota keys to the game for the Chicago Cubs. This season, a record by a run scored. Pretty simple. Four plus runs. They're 21 and three. Less than four. No wins on the year. So keep them under four. And, and that's very surprising with their pitching staff. Are capable of, of winning low run games. Milton Bradley is off to a sub 200 start and he's a hot hitter. This guy can hit though <laughs> as we've seen. Milton Bradley is hitting just 195 full home runs nine RBIs you and I were taking in the Cubs during BP. Ball comes off his bat a little different a little different noise to it a little pop to it. His range is average in the last eight games 67 points to get to 195. Question for him earlier this year was health. Right. Hamstring, wasn't it? Or rib cage. Groin, groin, that's right. And it was pinch hitting, but not obviously not healthy. Dangerous hitter though at the plate. He's already had a few run uh, run-ins with the Chicago media. If you don't like to talk to the media, you're in the wrong town. Right, and he, his cup debut in Chicago, he got ejected against the Cardinals. 2-1 pitch, a broken bat, double play ball. Thurston, Ryan, to first double play for 6-3. Thurston, naturally at second base. Started the double play and a natural shortstop in Brendan Ryan. This is right. pretty smooth. And Thurston, he feels more comfortable at second than any other position. Gets the ball quickly to Ryan. Ryan at the bag, fires to complete the double play. And that is something that you can help out a pitching staff, a pitching staff with good defense. Now it's Mike Fontenot. That's the play right there that Schumacher says is the hardest for him to make. The ball to his left with a runner at first. And how do you want to turn it? Do you want to do what Joe Thurston did just there, kind of pivot towards second base, or do you spin? And you have to know the running speed of both the, uh, the man at first and the hitter. And first and foremost is catch the ball and make sure you get at least one out. But obviously you want to, you know, if it's a natural double play ball, you want to be able to complete it. One and two the count. Fontenot is hitting 204 with five home runs, 17 RBIs, the third baseman. The next by Pinheiro. Slowly hit towards first. Pools takes an odd bounce. He'll step on the bag. After a leadoff single by Lee, he's a race on the double play, and Fontenot grounds out. Midway through two, it's one nothing.
St. Albans will televise the event as fans, Cardinal players, and celebrities raise money for the Pujols Family Foundation. Find out more at PujolsFamilyFoundation.org. Here's Nick Stavanoa. He was the one guy yesterday, Al, that actually, you know, at times looked pretty comfortable in the box. Smoked the ball a couple times, hit it right on the button. Got hits in his last two games and showing a little light. And there is some pressure on some of these young players because not only is Carpenter going to make the start tomorrow, but Ann Keel will be activated. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's that big breaking ball. You're assuming, you know, you're up there and you have to make a split second judgment. And then when it, you've got a full second <laughs> to decide, it throws you off. And there's the fastball right after that. And into right, Milton Bradley is there for the out. And there's one away. That brings in Brian Barton. You know, Ted Lilly has talked about Mike Mussina being one of the guys that he always loved to watch pitch. And he said the reason why is that he never gave in. And he said he could throw any pitch at any point in the count because he had, because he had confidence in his stuff. And he said once I realized that I could do that as well is when I really started to win. It makes a big difference if you feel you could throw any of your pitches for strikes at any time. Ball behind all of a sudden you don't give in to the hitter you still throw what you want. That's not the easiest thing to do is it? No and 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 sometimes you have the ability but can't execute it. One ball one strike on Brian Barden. Louie has been pretty consistent. You know, he's going to give you that solid six innings. You know, the teams that we've seen so far, I think you'd have to say that the Phillies and Milwaukee might be the best two that we've seen. I would have to concur. You know, the Cubs are a very good ball club. They're still trying to figure out some issues with their bullpen. And at times, you know, injury bug will pop up, but they're still very good. One two pitch, Barden. Takes a ball just inside. Well, the Cardinals certainly are dealing with injuries, but so are the Mets. It's not an excuse. You have to win games. 2 2. Barden pops it up into shallow right. Miles going out, and he'll make the play. Why is it outfielders are so content to let the infielders make a tough play? Well, if you're traveling and can't catch the Cardinals TV broadcast, catch all the action on your computer at MLB.tv. We've seen that a lot just in this homestand. A yeah, routine fly ball for an outfielder, and yet you ask a infielder, backpedal, look up as you're backtracking, and you know, and the outfielder just kind of standing right in front of the ball and give up on gives and, up on it. and going out you don't feel comfortable because you're not sure about the outfielder right you don't know if he's going to run up your backside or you're waiting for him to call you off but if you don't hear him do so then you have to be in position to make the play we saw that with Brendan Ryan on Sunday he had a couple of plays when he was at second base one in which he took a pop up away from green and then a short fly and right Tony the Russo said look I love the fact that he's aggressive, but let's use some common sense, too. There's the breaking ball and a strikeout of Pinheiro. Two on the night for Ted Lilly and a 1-2-3 inning. Third inning rolls in when we come back.
Two slots. Here's Blues coach Andy Murray. It's tough to be a Blues fan right now when the Blackhawks and Red Wings are still alive in the playoffs. It's not supposed to happen. Here's Giovanni Soto. Brendan Ryan, couple of hops to his left and makes the play. Soto retired. He's hitting just over 200 too. Struggling at the plate and he's a big part of their offense. There's Miles. He's hitting 217. No home runs, four RBIs. We saw his outstanding pitching performances on the pregame show, didn't we? I, I miss those. I don't. I hope we see him tonight. <laughs> I mean, I want to see him tonight pitch. I don't want to see the Cardinals get blown out. No. So now he's with the Cubs. So you want to see him. He made what three appearances on the mound for the Cardinals during his time, and you and I thought he should have made a few more. Oh, did we ever? <laughs> 07 was kind of a tough year. <laughs> there are a couple times when we were looking for any bright spot, <laughs> and he would provide and it. He would provide it going out there, mowing them down. One ball, one strike on Miles. Little chopper back to Pinheiro. Two away. Joel, so far so good. Very good. And first inning that he's retired the first man, but he has a chance to go through first time through the order. You know, nine up, nine down. Allowed two hits, but a pickoff and a double play ball would make it, you know, three innings with only facing nine batters. Well, so far, the defense has been very sharp. And don't forget also about the play that Brendan Ryan made to uh, end the top of the first on Fukudome. That was a yes. good play. And that's what I'm saying. Defense can really pick up your pitching staff when they're struggling right now and make it a lot better. You know, the more I watch Brendan Ryan defensively, the more you like him. And right before he had the injury, we, we saw the best play defensively, you know, in his brief career. High energy guy. He's fun to watch. He made some sparkling plays in Atlanta. Maybe he's just getting comfortable and starting to relax at this level. I think that's all it is. And, and that's, you know, and you talked about the over aggressive play over the weekend. I'd rather see that than lots of the days ago. So a strikeout, first of the night for Pinheiro. Bottom of the third rolls in. It'll be Thurston, Brendan Ryan, then the rookie, Colby Rasmus. Cardinals lead it by a run. Defending World Series champion Phillies make their first trip to the new Yankee Stadium. They'll take on Derek Jeter and the Yankees. Fox Saturday Baseball returns this week at three on Fox. Interleague play. Has it run its course? It's for the fans. I guess the fans like it, but 
to me, I, I'd like to see a balanced schedule so that when you got into postseason play, everybody in the National League played each other the same amount of times, and you really had a fair schedule to an extent. I, I agree. And there were times when it worked to the Cardinals' favor playing, you know, a lesser Kansas City team than, say, the Cubs playing the White Sox or the Reds playing Cleveland when they were good. But right now, the Kansas City Royals are going to give the Cardinals all they want and more. A 2 0 pitch to Thurston, taken a little bit high. Kansas City, though, the Cardinals you know, catch a break because Zach Greinke apparently will not pitch this weekend. So the Cardinals miss him. 3 0 pitch and a strike. Al has been asking for baseball fun facts, and we're going to have some more here tonight. You better believe it. 3 1 pitch. Joe Thurston down the right field line jumped on the pitch but pulled it foul. The only fun we've had the last few games are those fun facts. Guess who I spoke with today? John Mr. Tudor. I was going to say Mr. Fun. <laughs> John Tudor. Had a nice conversation with John. He said up he'll in be Massachusetts. Here. Yep. He's up in uh, the Boston area with his boys. He's coaching. His kids are hockey players and baseball players playing the cross. There's a walk to Thurston. He'll be in for the All Star game. He's bringing his family back. Let's take a look at our baseball fun fact. 1962, the Indians traded Harry Cheaty for a player to be named later. The Mets later decided to name Cheaty. So he wound up being traded for himself. Are you following that, Al? Yes, I, I understood it completely. That uh, now that's fun. That's just good old family fun right there. I'm trying to think of the young Dominican player who changed his name, and he would literally was a player that you know, you know. I'm sure, he didn't change traded, his age. He, no, no, he did that prior to that. But <laughs> uh, you know, was traded for a player to be named later. I mean, when baseball fun facts pop up, it's everybody at home drops what they're doing. Kids, come on in. Come on in. We got baseball fun facts. Here is Brendan Ryan. John Tudor, back in 1985, you might remember, started out 1 and 7 and finished up by going 20 and 1. 20 and 1. And it is amazing how. I know some of the Cubs players have gone to former coaches to get themselves turned around, but how colleagues, former coaches, former players can detect something and pick it up, and that's what happened with Tudor. It was a high school pitching buddy, right? Or catcher? High school catcher, they kind of detected something, and I was broadcasting a game between John Tudor and one of the Houston pitchers, and both of them, you know, just had a horrible night early in that 85 season. And you know what you saw that that day was nowhere near how good they became later on. But why well, is John? I said incredible. So what what was the difference? He said mechanically we figured out something, but also he said you know when you look back at my outfield and my infield, put the ball in play. Let these guys hit it. The defense was terrific. John Tudor was a fierce competitor. And had the ability to really, you know, throw a dead fish, and that ball just got there and stopped, and and just kind of fell off the plate, down and away, and but you know, guys hit it. Three and one, he would have won the Cy Young Award if not for Dwight Gooden that Dwight season. Gooden. Three balls and a strike, and let's see if they want to start the runner Thurston from first. Outfield deep for Brendan Ryan. Not running, but the pitch is taken for a ball. And you don't see that very often from Ted Lilly. Coming into this game, single digits as far as walks were concerned, and now he's already walked three. He had walked nine and struck out 38 coming in. And Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach, will come out and talk to him. And this is exactly what you're talking about. When you you know when you don't throw particularly hard, 
and you don't have the ability to spot your pitches. You, know, you feel a little unarmed. You're just out there a little out of sync and just one little thing might get him back into the strike zone and then you know he can pick up from there and just put up zeros. Cardinals were swept by Milwaukee. Final was eight to four in that game. Eleven walks issued by the Cardinals. Eleven walks and a hit batter. What was it? Twenty three walks in the three game series and Cardinal pitchers hit four four batters and only allowed 16 hits. I mean, that's the other thing. Only all the base 16. Runners. <laughs> but that's the one thing about Milwaukee. You know, they don't have a great on base percentage, but when they connect, they make the most of it. See that ratio not very good for Lilly. Rasmus with a fly ball to the opposite way. Soriano backs up to make the catch. And Thurston was halfway, and he's back to second. And there's one out, and it brings in Pools. Now, in looking at Pools, you've seen a guy expanding his own a little bit. Not as selective as we've seen in the last uh, couple of weeks, but anything mechanically. Is he pulling off of pitches, anything like that? Well, you just talked about it. He's expanded his zone, so he gets off balance. You see him, you know, not keeping his weight back. He's moving forward, which your head has to move a little bit too, and you're just not centering the ball. I mean, you've got to get back to that powerful base, get back, and, and you know, and drive the ball. Pujols, a vicious rip. See, that's, that's a fastball there, and, you know, you'd be surprised. Even great hitters have a hard time putting the first pitch in. But there, you know, as you're, you're getting... Even though he's a little bit out there, but still so close to being that perfect swing for Malibu Pools. But just slightly a lot more movement going forward than you normally see. One out runners at first and second. Here comes the 0 1 pitch. Instead of check on Thurston, Cardinals have stolen a base tonight. That was Brendan Ryan. He stole third. Back in the first inning, came around to score on the single by Molina. One nothing. Be shocked over the course of the year how many first pitch base hits you give up. It's very, very few. Turn that ball over a little bit, and Albert just didn't even sniff at. It. But you go out there and throw first pitch strikes. Very few are even put in play. A lot of them are just fouled off. And the ones that are put in play, it's a it's a low percentage that are that achieve a base hit. Here's a one one to Pools, taking a little bit low. Two and one. Should be a pitch right here that he might get to drive and park it in the seats. With a lesser pitcher. You know, you say, okay, it becomes a little more predictable of a fastball count. With Ted Lilly and his ability to throw any pitch, it's still a guessing game. Been very concerned with the runners tonight, hasn't he? He's put them all on there. He wants a second chance to get them out. With pools up, not going anywhere, you wouldn't think. Milwaukee's tied up their game. It's 1 1 with Houston. The 2 1 pitch. Pujols out to center. Okadome is there to make the catch. And Albert is over two. Two outs, and it brings in Molina. Lou Pinella, speaking of fiery competitors, and Tony La Russa, those two go back to their childhood days. Sure do. Days in Tampa, Florida, played against each other on a high school team and played together on a American Legion. Lou was a star player, rookie of the year, had a very good career. Tony, because of an arm injury, former number one draft pick, but always fought to, to make a roster. But they both become very good managers. And it's interesting to see how Tony really utilizes all of his roster where the star player like Pinella pretty much has a set lineup and doesn't deviate it with unless there's injury. Two outs for Yadier Molina. Looks at a ball inside and pulls. Now for two. 
a little bit of a rut frustration in that dugout first and second with two outs Molina connected with two outs back in the first to make it one nothing picked up his 16th RBI the stadium is filled up it's a sea of red here tonight better than 40,000 for each game but there are tickets available We'll head on the road next week, Milwaukee and San Francisco. And we'll have Colorado and Cincinnati. Probably the best giveaway in that homestand is for the kids. Backpack featuring Yadier Molina. One ball, one strike with two outs and two on. Bukadome, the center fielder, now has moved in with Molina at the plate. Remember, he was playing pretty deep last time with him up. That breaking ball, are you doing Molina a favor to where he's able to make that adjustment? I, I think you are. You know, you're so good at going up the middle into the opposite field. And, and when you're throwing a lot of pitches out away from him, it's an easy pitch for him to shoot to that, that alley. Season with runners in scoring position, one of the best Cardinals to have up there hitting 375. One of the reasons he rarely strikes out. The 2 1 pitch. Shoots and foul and out of play. Talking with Bob Nightingale today of USA Today. And mentioned Molina and having a shot for the All Star game. And Bob says, you know, for people that live here in St. Louis, you understand what baseball is all about here in town. But he says, in his mind, this is the best baseball town in America. He said he can't wait to get here for the all-star game and he does a great job covering the uh, major leagues. Yes. 2-2 two -two pitch on its way. Runners go. Just got a piece. Real good jump there by Thurston. Good jump. Good pitch because it was an off speed pitch. Slow breaking ball and. Yachty did wait back as best he could and got a little piece of it. He was shooting for that. Right. Field right center field gap. Runner at first, you have to make sure that Thurston goes at second. That's it. <laughs> and that's why a lot of times, a, you know, a, a catcher, especially if it was Yachty, forget about the lead man, but he'll throw to second. That's right. Because that guy has got no jump. The 2 2 pitch to Molina. Here it comes. Foul back. You were waiting for that fastball to come in after the slow, tantalizing pitches out there, and it, it's very sneaky. You know, it's. A term that you know it's not a real high velocity, but because of his off speed pitches and that ability to kind of get lull you into looking for something slow, if he can spot that fastball up and in, he can really tie you up. Two balls, two strikes, two on, one nothing Cardinals here in the Redbirds half of the third. That slow breaking ball is hit to short and the force play as they flip to Miles. Cardinals strand two. They've left three on through three. Top of the lineup for the Cubs two up.
16th of 04, Brad Thompson breaks a 97-year-old minor league record with 57 consecutive scoreless innings. 57. Remember when he first came up? And just uh, still has a baby face, but he was so young looking at that time and just threw strikes. Here's Soriano. Little chopper hit to short. Brendan Ryan slings it over to pool holes for the first out. Soriano is retired as we start play here in the fourth. Fred Thompson from Las Vegas, Nevada, where the one and only Greg Maddox resides, and he used to go to Greg Maddox's camps growing up. Idolized Greg Maddox. How about the start from Pinheiro? Not one fly ball out. And the two base hits he's given up were grounders that went through. It's seven ground ball outs, and that sinker is working. We say sinker. Pretty obvious what the pitch is going to do, but how do you throw it? How do you grip it? That's a two seamer. You know, you got what we call a four seam fastball that kind of rides up. There's Barton. Terrio twice is grounded to him. It's a little deceiving because, you know, all position players, when they grab the ball, they naturally grab a four seam pitch because it's straight. You know, they can make it straight. But if you are a power pitcher, that four seam fastball, you can get it to ride. You can get movement on that pitch. But the sinker is one where you throw it and stay on top of it and it it will stay down in the zone and it'll you know kind of uh, have a little sinking action. Four pitches in the inning and Pinheiro has a one two three inning against the top of the order midway through four and it's one nothing. The ballpark Tuesday, June 16th. All scouts and their family and friends can purchase discounted tickets. Number to call is 345 9500. In steps Chris Duncan, a 1 0 Cardinals lead. Very efficient top of the fourth there by Pinheiro. He's throwing Pitches. strikes. Direct contrast to what we saw last night. And let's see how Lily works on Duncan this time. Back in 2006, Chris Duncan was the Cardinals. Rookie of the year. And when healthy, he showed that uh, he could produce. He was third in all the baseball behind David Ortiz and Ryan Howard in home runs per at bat. I mean, think about that. As he had 22 home runs and only 280 at bats that season. And a great second half. And then the next year, he had a good first half, and then the injuries got him in the second half. As a sports hernia sports in 2007. Hernia. And then the herniated disc in his neck that surgically repaired. 
Cardinals have been looking for help from the minor leagues. It will not come from David Freeze anytime soon. Talk to Dr. Paletta tonight, but they did some surgery on on David Freeze arthroscopically. Mm, there's that breaking ball again. That time it's 66 in our gun. And you can see why he's so tough on left-handers, and he's got Duncan talking to himself. But David Freeze had a lot of scar tissue as we look at this breaking ball. And he just can't pull the trigger. Look at how far he's got it back in his in his uh, hand. That that really takes the velocity out of it, and then you pull it down like a lampshade to get the curveball action. But said he had an awful lot of scar tissue. They've got it removed, and almost immediately he had more mobility. Here's a ground ball left side, diving stop by the shortstop, and no play. So good effort that time by Terrio, but no throw. Put it in his back pocket. Stabano has a base hit. Part of the process of being a major leaguer is to know when to throw and when not to. And sometimes you're much better off just putting it in your back pocket. Ted Lilly is 33. He's making his eighth start of the season here tonight. He's fourth on the road. At least 10 games in each of the past six years. And he's one of six to accomplish that feat. Those that throw left handed. Gary Zito was on that list. Johan Santana, CC Sabathia, Mark Burley. Double play ball, 6 4 3. And we head to the fifth. Lee, Bradley, Fontenot do up. It's 1 0. You with the Cardinals. Pinheiro is under 40 pitches, and we're now playing here in the fifth. As Derek Lee will lead it off, he singled up the middle his first time up. Only four pitches last inning for Pinheiro. 30 year old from Puerto Rico. You know the other starters are watching this performance, but some of the outings we've seen lately, they would have. Twice as many pitches in the same amount of innings. Pinheiro this season has been very good here at Bush Stadium. As Lee hits a rope into center, but that'll be caught. Rasmus there for the first out. That was tattooed. Oh, Abner put those guys out there for a reason, right? <laughs> he did. And he was positioned perfectly. Yeah. See the pitch count per inning. That fourth inning where you get only four pitches and you get through that inning. You'll be thinking about that in the sixth or seventh. Here's a ground ball. Third pitch of the inning. And out number two is Bradley. He's over two. He's also hit into a double play. 
Now, if you're fine, no. Third baseman. You have to take a pitch. Oh, or two. no. Oh, yes. You know, Dan, that first pitch may be the oh, best yes. one you see of the ser of the sequence. So yeah, you've got to be ready. I'm throwing that out the window. You <laughs> have to take a pitch here. <laughs> I agree with you. All bets are off on that point of but view and thinking. Would you want to bet me that he does or doesn't? I don't know. <laughs> I, I would not take that bet. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. But I think he was taken all the way as that pitch was called the ball, but pretty close. He's swinging here and lines it the other way. Perfectly placed just inside the left field line. And Mike Fontenot with a two out double. So he'll be in scoring position for Soto. Soto his first time up grounded out to short nice piece of hitting here. So up and away and just kind of guides the ball. To the opposite field. And because it's down the line he ends up in scoring position. Kyle Lowe has lost his third consecutive start last night. Needed 89 pitches to get 12 outs, but he was going on three days rest. And Tony La Russa afterwards really second guessed himself, bringing Lowe's out for the start after he made that rain short start on Friday. And I commend Kyle Lowe's for going out there and saying, hey, Tony and I, we both thought this was the right thing. I was fine. I just didn't have a good out. All one pitch. One ball, one strike. What made it a little curious was after he goes four innings and 89 pitches, remember his last inning was his most efficient, one, two, three inning. They take him out, and then you've got five innings for your bullpen with Carpenter coming off the disabled list on uh, on tomorrow. You know, Brendan Ryan playing short left field. I've noticed that tonight. He's been playing very deep at short. More times than not, he's been standing on the outfield grass. I'm sure part of that is you know, it obviously gives him a little bit more range to get to ground balls, and you also know who's running at the plate. That's that's it. And Okendo, he's out there inspecting. You look, you know, he may not be happy with him playing that deeply. And Okendo has Soto as one of his Puerto Rican catchers, along with Molina. On the World Baseball Classic team, Team Puerto Rico. But I don't he, think he runs that slowly. When he starts, even if he walks into the pitch, Brendan Ryan is still on the outfield grass. I mean, he has to take two or three steps to get on the uh, dirt. And now you see Thurston is back on the grass too at second. A 2 2 pitch. Full count. Miles on deck. You see the two middle infielders on the outfield grass. And you see how far that Pujols is playing off the first baseline. First base is open. But don't give in here on a 3 2. Round ball. Barton is there. Up strand runner, their first of the night. Pinheiro is sharp. It's one nothing.
from his house tonight. And on Facebook, you'll see Cardinals videos and photos. Facebook and Twitter, foxsports.com slash Midwest. Isn't he up for neighbor of the year? He is. And uh, I know his neighborhood loves to see him home and wish Jim nothing but the best. We miss him here at the ballpark, but he we had sure to spend do. some time with uh, his newborn baby, Tyler. Oh, I, I thought it was maybe the neighborhood watch. Here is uh, Pinheiro and Thurston and Brendan Ryan. And a swing and a miss. I don't know if I want to see his tweet that goes out if it concerns us. <laughs> Wouldn't be pretty, I wouldn't imagine. Pinheiro was called out on strikes his first time up. We've got a pitcher's duel here tonight. Yes, we do. And unlike the one Saturday when Wainwright was matched up against Supon, the Cardinals are leading this one one nothing. One two pitch. Just got a piece. Both pitchers, their pitch counts are pretty low. Is that's only pitch number 65 for Lilly, and there's Wainwright, who has one of the best starts of the season, but nothing to show for it in that game over the weekend against Milwaukee. He has a lot to build on from that game. He only allowed two hits. One of those probably should have been caught. Right down the middle. Four strikeouts for Ted Lilly. Saw in that shot that Wainwright was talking with. Khalil Green and Tony LaRusse informing Green that he'll be in a utility role for the next uh, seven to ten days or so. Only hitting 204. He's got six errors. Just trying to get him to relax a little bit. A little bit too hard on himself. And I and like if good teammates over there trying to talk to him, get him to relax a little bit, get him to smile. But you know, Khalil Green just not happy with his play and just having a tough time dealing with it. A lot of self imposed pressure obviously. Yes. With the trade and. But this is a results driven business. And when you're hitting 204 with six errors. It's tough to deal with. In a lot of ways. And it's. You know the disappointment of not producing offensively. Not getting to certain balls that you think he should be doing defensively. And you know, they haven't lost faith in him and they hope they know for this team to be at its best. You know you have to have Khalil Green out there on a daily basis but being Khalil Green the guy that you know somewhere between the, the guy that hit 27 home runs and 90 plus RBIs. Thurston pops it up down the left field line Soriano is over. And it drops in. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure that Soriano called off Fontano, but he just kind of pulled up. Usually the shortstop has one of the better angles. But you see Fontano pull up and Soriano really never in position. Terrio was further behind and just kind of a ball in no man's land that the play can't be made. Of course, looking at Terrio now with the left hand hitting Thurston, he's kind of playing up towards the second base bag and playing deep. One ball and two strikes. Thurston lines it to Lee. I don't think he's hurt. I think he's just in shock over the line drive. A good play made by a gold glover, Derek Lee. Yeah, multiple gold glove winner, Derek Lee at first base. Well, six is a serious number. When the Cardinals score six, you get a 20 ounce coffee, found a frozen drink for just a quarter. The next day at On the Run at Mobile. Look at Derek Lee here. In good defensive position, knees bent. Kind of hit him in the in the palm of the hand and then kind of rolled down to the the webbing. Just going back to that pop up that fell in front of Soriano. There's so many times we saw Terry Pendleton make that over the shoulder catch at the Old Bush Stadium and, and here at this ballpark, Scott Rowland. It's a little tougher in this configuration because those, instead of having the foul territory just go straight on out, then you got that curvature towards the playing field. 
And I'm sure Terry would uh, be a little more conservative on some of those balls not falling into the stands. Oh, two off the end of the bat, and that will drop in for a base hit for Brendan Wright. On base for the third time tonight with two walks in that single. Cleo Green's having his problems that creates an opportunity for somebody else and Brendan Ryan trying to make a statement. If you're going to be a leadoff man you need to get on base. He's already scored the only run of this game. He's walked twice and now he has a base hit and remember he stole third on the in the first inning when he scored. Colby Rasmus the hitter with two outs and a runner at first. He's grounded back to the pitcher and also flied out to left. He has had his struggles against lefties. We forget because we've been hearing about Colby Rasmus for a while now only 22. 22 years of age. Signed out of high school so you know he's, he's been playing a while but. Throughout his minor league career he always struggled early in the season. And then. You know, in the second half he started catching up and put, put up pretty good numbers but. You really don't realize how good they were with the slow start. You were telling me that uh, Peter Cosma, the first round pick from a few years ago, middle infielder, shortstop, had a good night last night. Yeah. Peter uh, had a game winning hit in the 12th inning and on the night had three hits. Yes. No balls, two strikes, two outs, runner at first. See what Lily, the veteran, wants to do with the rookie here as they set up outside. Remember Soriano was an infielder, and we kind of wondered did he get a good jump on that little pop up off the bat of Thurston down the left field line? And then you kind of see the way he sets up, and it's not exactly the way a lot of the outfielders will position themselves to get good jump. His base is way too wide. Here's the breaking ball pulled foul. You know, Ryan Braun, we saw him make that great catch in left field last night for the Brewers. You know, since he's moved to left field, he hasn't made an error yet. He's not made an error and made an outstanding play, but he needed to move someplace because we saw him play third base. But Soriano kind of resisted going to the outfield. And was it Frank Robinson who was going to put him on the involuntary retirement list if he didn't accept? But see that real wide base? You know, you've got to almost put your legs together to get a good jump. Rasmus, deep right field. Goodbye, home run for Colby Rasmus. The rookie goes deep off of Ted Lilly. A two run homer, his fourth of the season, and the Cardinals lead it by the score of three to nothing. And it's another two out hit for the Cardinals and a three nothing lead. And a big bomb. Against a quality left handed pitcher by the young left handed hitter. You really worry a little bit that he doesn't get too home run conscious. Remember in spring training, Tony wanted him to think he was a line drive hitter. Don't try and have the power of Ankeel and Duncan. But if they keep on making mistakes on the inner half and he's swinging the bat well because he's getting all this consecutive playing time, well, some of them are going to be hit out of the park. A high towering drive by Colby Rasmus. They eventually feel that he will hit in that 20 25 home run range. Oh, no doubt about it. But you want to mature into that hitter and keep your high average. 2 0 on pools. Right now, they classify Rasmus more as that line drive, line hitter. drive hitter. And that's, you know, Albert's a line drive hitter. Just happens to walk into power. 35 <laughs> homers every once exactly, in a while. Exactly. Because. He's so strong and he's a line drive hitter. And you know, he centers the ball and and he'll hit it his chair out. I mean more than most, but he maintains that high average because he's a line drive hitter. And time is called, you know, Pujols and visiting with Al McCray about Albert, he said he's the one guy that we're pretty much hands off. I mean, we talk to him, but he knows himself better than anybody. He's such a great hitter. He's able to correct his own mistakes. And what he can't correct, Didi corrects. And Didi's very good at home. Uh, and that's what I mean. Going over you know, video. But I mean, I think that's because 
you know, Albert's helped educate her. We're serious. The 3 1 pitch. Rasmus home run measured at 417 feet. A high drive into the seats and right. Here's a 3 2 to Pools on its way. Off speed pitch grounded towards the middle. Nice play by the shortstop. Well, that's an excellent play by Terry. It was a ball hit the lip, stayed down, and he stayed with it. But the big blow in this game, Colby Rasmus. Off of Ted Lilly. The rookie got the best of it. 3-0. AT&T in the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. I got it. It's 3 nothing. 3 nothing. Miles trying to bunt his way on. Pinheiro steps, throws, makes the play. May have butted that off the plate. And in doing so, nice easy hop to Pinheiro. And you know Aaron Miles knows about the defensive ability of Pinheiro. Probably the best fielding pitcher on the staff. Only Usually 50. does it with his feet. You know, the kick <laughs> saves. <laughs> Only 50 pitches tonight for Joe Pinheiro. Ted Lilly struck out his first time up. Only strikeout this evening for Pinheiro. And with one out, tapped foul for strike one. Lilly came in as a 125 hitter. No home runs, two RBIs. Quickly, strike two. Bulls better be ready with some of these bullets that come his way. Runs here, goes off the plate. The high chopper fields it, and you see how he plants that back leg. No crow hop, but he got his extra momentum using his lower half to make that throw. The one two pitch. Slicing and just foul. Just foul. One and two on Ted Lilly with one out, nobody on. Absolutely gorgeous night here in St. Louis. The Cubs and Cardinals, one of the best rivalries in all of sports. Always have something special, and now you really enjoy it with the Cup fans coming down from Chicago. 
Called third strike on uh, Ted Lilly. So he strikes out for the second time. He show up at the ballpark. And I remember when the Cardinals, you know, in the early 2000s, when Chicago was struggling, Cardinals were playing great baseball in September, and you'd walk into that building, Wrigley Field, and there still was a buzz. You know, Cubs would be way out of it. Didn't matter. Well, best friends, neighbors, even family members, you know, Cub fan and Cardinal fan, and bragging rights for the the off season. Who won the season series head to head matchups. Chicago leads in the all time series over the Cardinals. 1 0 pitch with two outs and nobody on to Soriano. Ground ball left side taken there by Barton. And again, another 1 2 3 inning for Pinero. That time only eight pitches. Molina leads it off for the return. We'll have game two for you here on Fox Sports Midwest. Tomorrow at 6.30 with the pregame show. And Chris Carpenter back to the mound for the Cardinals. We're all looking forward to that. It's got to excite every Cardinal fan to see Chris back out there. And he really feels so good. He's saying, I'm definitely going to swing the bat. And I'm saying, please don't. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to be an automatic out. And the reason you say that is that's how he injured his oblique by... Swinging the bat. That's and National League Baseball. Pitchers have to hit. You have to be an athlete. So you're saying when you were in the American League, you then were not an athlete with No, the I didn't say that. I said other guys were. Other guys. So you you <laughs> stayed an athlete because your background in the National League. And I, I think I've told you before that you know the only the only position on the <laughs> baseball field that you don't have to be an athlete is a pitcher. It helps if you are. But if you have the ability to throw a baseball at a high degree, you can get away with it and not be a good athlete. Are you concerned about Carpenter coming back too early? I think it has it, to be in the back of your It's a mind. little bit of a risk in the sense, but I think the deciding factor is he plays with control. That's slowly hit. Can he beat it out? No, almost did. Got by Lilly, and then the third baseman made the play, and that's Fontno. Let's take a look at the Affleck trivia question. We'll get back to that Affleck. point in just a moment. Did Lou Pinella ever get a hit off of Al Rabaski? I'm sure he did. I'm going to say no. Look at that scout. Affleck. Two guys that just were probably mean. Look at that. 0 for 2 against Al. I know I just love to go into Yankee Stadium, sitting out in the bullpen, and 
you know you sit in the bullpen he was a left fielder for the Yankees and the relationship he had with his own fans a lot of <laughs> hand gesturing a lot of um, very vocal communication I mean sometimes you would think it would be you know offensive but they loved him and he loved them I mean but Lou played this game with a great passion and and you know, when you've ever seen him uh, argue with an umpire you see some of that passion here's a ground ball backhanded by Derek Lee from his backside to Lily covering it first and they take a hit away it's a good play Hilton St. Louis at the ballpark the only hotel that gives you home field advantage number to call is 421-1776 or visit their website Hilton St. Louis dot com but uh, you know, back to Carpenter, and this would be my concern: is that it's the Cubs, Cardinals, it's forty thousand plus. It's not a bullpen session at three in the afternoon. It wasn't an arm injury; it was an oblique strain, and you know, obviously everything becomes more intensified. You go out there and you try to, even though you say you tuned it up, you dialed it up a little bit, you know, in your bullpen session to, to give you the okay for the start. It's nothing like the competitive juices are flowing when you get out there during a regular season game. And as you said, the atmosphere is wonderful. With Woody Williams, when he had that same injury, he was so good at he would choke up three or four inches on the bat and take just a nice, easy swing and put the ball in play. Or he tried to bunt. If it was a sacrifice situation, certainly he would bunt. But you always were concerned about him. Woody was a better hitter. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Former shortstop. Yeah, college shortstop. But you know you, you have to it's use only, it's only human nature and I'm sure Tony will say something and Dave Duncan will say something hey you know just be smart you know don't go out there trying to hit home runs speaking of home runs did he get enough Soriano back near the wall and he's got it Stavanoa flies out to deep left and we head to the seventh. Network AT&T, your world delivered. And by McDonald's, the double cheeseburger extra value meal, now just $2.99 at McDonald's. Back in St. Louis, Ryan Terrio leads it off, 2, 3, and 4 in the seventh. Miss Pinheiro has been cruising so far, only 57 pitches. Only 17 balls tonight. Absolutely gorgeous here in St. Louis. Bush Stadium. Cubs Cardinals game one of this three game series all three games right here on Fox Sports Midwest that's quickly strike two. Well this is what you want to see. 
Weathermeyer, Loge, Pinheiro, last three starts. You see Pinheiro, the 59 pitches, the other two 90 or 90 plus to get through their games. Pinheiro steps on the bag for the out. He needed a stopper, and this might be the guy that does it tonight. Somebody's got to step up and take charge. And Pinheiro, when you really look at it, you know, he won his first four starts, and then he lost three straight. But really during that time, you know, he, he, he hasn't had a real clunker. Uh, the fewest innings he's pitched in a start was five, and he won that ball game. But most, he's got an eight inning outing. He's got uh, sixes, sevens. So, I mean, this is a guy that really consistently has been doing a nice job, and now you're getting back on track, and there's something about home cooking. That makes him pitch a lot more effectively. And it's good to see him going deeper into games this year, something he did not do last year. Very good point, Dan, because there was, you know, I mean, you really looked at him strictly a six inning pitcher, and there was, of course, he hadn't even come to the the inning total that you got worried. When you got around 80 pitches, all of a sudden you seemed like you had to get the bullpen ready. On 2 0, oh, Fukudome grounds to Brendan Ryan for the out. Stop by the Westin and enter to win your chance to catch pop flies and win great prizes. For complete details, visit www.westinpopupchallenge.com or call 314-621-2000. Two outs, and here's Derek Lee, who is lined out to center and also grounded up the middle. He's probably had the best at bats of the night for the Cubs in this lineup. Two outs, nobody on. First pitch is strike. A lot of first pitch strikes tonight. Well, now they're attacking the zone and just love what he's doing. You know, he's throwing strikes. Oh, one pitch. It's amazing to see the numbers across baseball with first pitch strikes. When you get 16 of 22 like tonight, the averages of the hitters you know, across the board, I mean, it's roughly under 200. And if you're keeping the ball down and they're you know they they might get a good whack at it but they're just pounding it in the ground. Let your defense work for you. And the Cardinal defense has been good tonight on top of it. A 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Second time I think he's had a, a three ball count. Cubs have three base hits the Cardinals with four the big blast by Colby Rasmus two run homer Cardinals also scored the first no walks fastball down the way. Lee pop up to now should be caught. It will. Rasmus over. Time to stretch here at Bush Stadium. A beautiful night here at Bush. The Cardinals lead it three to nothing.
not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cardinals. Brian Barton looks at a strike. We're underway here in the bottom of the seventh. A pitcher's duel in game one of this series. All one pitch to Barton. A little check swing back to Lilly. No underhanded to Derek Lee for the first out. Give me a well pitched game anytime, and that's what I love about watching baseball. Let's hope these fans appreciate Pinero. Pitch one heck of a ball game. Really right at 97 pitches, and Pinero probably still in the 70s. Pinero with one out. Looks at a ball down low. In the ninth, the Phillies lead Cincinnati four to three. That's the bottom of the ninth. Pittsburgh tied with Washington, also in the bottom of the ninth, five five. Milwaukee has jumped out to a two run lead over the Astros. Top of the six, it's now four two. And Ortiz, Russ Ortiz, the pitcher for the Astros, has hit a home run in that ball game. It's Astros are having trouble scoring. Speaking of Ortiz, how about David Ortiz of the Red Sox? Boy, he's fallen on hard times. Not hit a home run yet this year and almost approaching his career uh, drought, would you say, right? Yeah. Consecutive at bats without that home run. As Pinero pops it up, that'll find the seats out of play. Got that bad wrist and that, you know, really hampered your, your swing. One thing about Boston that they've been so good over the last few years is how many pitches they take, making pitchers work, knocking out starters, getting into bullpens, and a lot of that's due to Ortiz. Clutch hitter. One and two. Good rip by Pinero right there. Don't hurt your side. <laughs> no, he's an athlete. He's an athlete. Well, yeah, we watch him feel. We don't want to say that now. Carpenter is too. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely is too. Carpenter is a hockey player growing up. Don't mess with those guys. Ampin Euro strikes out for the third time tonight. So Chris Carpenter returns tomorrow night for the Cardinals. This is such a, a class act and such a vital part of this pitching staff. And I mean when he's not pitching, he can have an impact just talking. You know, young pitchers can learn from him just by watching. Who was your biggest influence? Bob Gibson. Two outs, Thurston. Liner into center. Fukudome goes back to make the catch, and we played seven. Four hits for the Cardinals, three for the Cubs, and a 3 nothing St. Louis lead.
Lilly, the lefty of the Cubs. And only seven hits combined so far. Pinheiro has been outstanding for the Redbirds. Former Cardinal Aaron Miles. We know Pinheiro can field his position. Damage done at the plate by Colby Rasmus. Signed for a young man who's watching at home, and they miss him here at the ballpark, Daniel. His family and friends here watching Cardinal baseball. Here's Milton Bradley, a 3 0 Cardinals lead, first pitch strike. Underway here in the eighth. Only 69 pitches. Pitching here in the ninth for Pinheiro. Very efficient. Ground ball again. Second base. Thurston there. Some defensive changes for the Cardinals as Shane Robinson is taken over in right field and Skip Schumacher. There's a look at Shane and Skip is out in left field, Rasmus in center. So that's your outfielders tonight. In the late innings, our Hot Shots Exmo Cam brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. Two seam, fa two seam fastball gets on top of it, and boy, that pitch is. Been good for him getting these ground balls. It's not allowed more than one base runner an inning and only allowed three hits on the night. Three base runners and one was erased in a double play. One was picked off. Out to left, Schumacher over to make the catch. You see the pitch total by inning and a total of 72 as Pinheiro has been masterful tonight. Cardinals do have a complete game. The season that was uh, Cal Lowe's earlier this year and uh, Pinheiro is just one over the minimum. Lowe's did that against Houston. You know, after last night using eight pitchers. You really hoped that Pinheiro would go deep in this ball game. I think he's exceeded everyone's expectations and really has. Taking the bull by the horns in many different ways here tonight. This is Soto, one ball, one strike. He is 0 for 2. Soriano let off the game for the Cubs with a base hit. Then he was picked off at first. And that kind of set the tone for this game, didn't it? Yes, it did. There's almost the feeling here at the ballpark like, here we go again. <laughs> and we, we kind of remarked at that time that a single defensive play sometimes can pick up a club or a Starting pitcher, and then things settle in, and he has settled in tonight. Also, in the inning was the play by the shortstop Brendan Ryan to take a hit away from Fukudome, and again, it, it just felt like a, a different atmosphere as opposed to what we saw in the three games against Milwaukee. It's two clubs. This is seventh meeting before between them, and they're three and three on the season. A 2 2 pitch. Rounder pulled foul. Philadelphia holds on and defeats Cincinnati 4 3. Crowd of 41,374 here tonight. 2 2 2 outs. Looks like slider. Here it comes. Soto, a swing and a miss. And a strikeout. Third of the night. For Pinheiro, the top of the lineup for St. Louis as we move to the bottom of the eighth, and the Cardinals lead it three to nothing.
event. Visit your St. Louis area Hyundai dealers today. Bush Stadium the scene. And a Chevy call to the bullpen trying to get this guy right. This is uh, Kevin Gregg, the former closer in Florida. And Lou Pinella has come out and said even with Marmol, they'd like Marmol to be in the eighth and Greg to finish out games here in the night. Greg leads their staff. They have nine saves. He has six of them in seven opportunities. High ERA, and a lot of that was roughed up his last time. When on Saturday, he was tagged for four runs and four hits, two homers, and a hit batsman. He didn't record an out on Saturday and really got roughed up. He's been scoreless in 11 of his 18 previous relief outings, including uh, a six up, six down, two inning stint against the Cardinals earlier this year. Brendan Ryan, Colby Rasmus, who is homer tonight, and then Albert Pools. Pools is 0 for 3. Rasmus, a two run homer back in the fifth off of Ted Lilly. And the RBI single by Molina with two outs in the first. All the runs scored. With two outs, interesting to see that shot there as Tony LaRusso talking to Pujols. I'm sure about maybe what he's picking up with Albert. And sometimes, you know, even Albert will get a scouting report from from Tony. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Slicing down the right field line. Bradley on the move, and it's a foul ball. Just foul. Brendan can't believe it. See the fans down the right field area. They are claiming that this ball was fair. And it looked like they're just barely foul. I mean, but pretty tough angle there. Two and two on Brendan. He's been on base three times tonight. Ted Lilly, the starter for Chicago, gives them seven strong innings. Only around, allows uh, the four base hits, but the three runs. So important to be able to close out that inning once you get the two outs. And he was not able to do that twice. 2 2 pitch to Brendan Ryan. Brendan walked the first two times up. He scored the only run prior to the two run home run to Rasmus, and he was on base for that one. So. Been on base all three times. He scored two of the three runs and he stole the base tonight. One for one with two walks. Right field, Bradley is there for the first out. Looking ahead now to the top of the night. It'll be Miles, then Greg Spot, and Alfonso Soriano. They've got a couple of guys with power on their bench. Pop power comes to mind. Remember, they've also added Mr. Friel, not to say that he's a power guy, but right. he's been added to their roster since the last time we've seen them because of the injury to their third baseman. Yeah, I've always liked Ryan Friel, real high energy type guy, and when he's healthy, he's a pretty exciting player. It sure is. He can't stay healthy, though. That's, That's the it. problem. He plays so hard. Kevin Gregg was drafted in the 15th round back in 1996 by Oakland. Rasmus off the end of the bat into shallow right. Milton Bradley is there. Two outs. A lot of times you'll see a guy that long arms the ball and then you really picked up. This is what you say is example of short arming. Really tight to the body, you know, no real extension reaching back and a lot more deceptive. Was the Exmo cam presented by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill? Pujols, 0 for 3 tonight. Popped out to the catcher in foul territory. He's fly to center, and also grounded out to short. Two outs, nobody on for Albert. He's got that nasty tight slider, doesn't right. he? Right, and, and because of that short arming action. You know, a lot of people, you know, wouldn't teach that, but for him, it's a natural movement. And as I said, much more deceptive. In 2007, Greg had 32 saves. 
which was eighth best in the National League with the Florida Marlins. Last year he was a guy that was in that closer spot again with 29 saves. But didn't he lead the National League in blown saves? Yeah, he really struggled. At 29 saves and 38 chances. 2 2. There's the slider again, and Pujol somehow is able to keep that fair down the left field line. He's thinking too. And in there with a the stand up double. I mean, that is something else. You talk about going down to get a pitch. Pujols did it here. This is our pitch by pitch brought to you by Chevrolet. Uh, you see the slider goes out there, and then a much better one gets him to go after it. Another one out there. All look the same. There gets him over the top, and that time a little bit further out, and he reaches out, one hands the ball that follow through, lifts it over the head of Fontenot for the double. And then that hustle. I mean, you know a lot of guys would have been very content staying at first base. But Albert obsessed with scoring. He gets out there in scoring position for his buddy Molina. Yadier got the scoring started for the Cardinals in the first inning with a two out base hit. Hey, there's two outs. Brought in Brendan Ryan. Let's see if the theme continues here tonight. One ball, one strike with two outs. Nobody getting loose in the bullpen, and why would they? With Pinheiro the way that he's been throwing tonight. He's only thrown 77 pitches to get through the first eight. So plenty in the tank. Here's a 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One Cardinals with a run in the first. Two-run homer by Rasmus in the fifth. They've got five base hits, but Chicago with only three hits. Well, you know Pinheiro would love to finish this off. He wants that complete game badly. Here's a ground ball up the middle. And we head to the ninth. Miles will lead it off against Pinheiro when we come back. The Cardinals trying to hold on. Nine complete games in his career, all in the American League. And the last time was back in 2006 with Seattle. You agree that there is a rhythm not only with the pitcher and the catcher, but when you're always around the plate like Pinheiro is tonight, there's also a rhythm for the umpire. Brendan Ryan, 50 play. Absolutely, Dan. You know that 
umpire kind of gets into a strike mentality and borderline pitches will go for you know the the pitcher because he's established that he's going to be around there there's his last complete game was 06 his last complete game shutout back in 03 versus Texas pitching for Seattle I mean it just seemed like even that first pitch as you see Franklin getting loose the Cardinal closer just in case but you know, he was around the plate but he gets the benefit of the doubt with that call like that but in a lot of cases you know because he's established in the mind and to the hitters on top of it that he's throwing strikes they're going to be swinging at those borderline pitches this is hot power strike two Denny's Reyes was warming up for hot power but once that uh, Pinero retired Miles, they set him down, and Franklin continues. Up on the two strikes. Alfonso Soriano on deck. Let's see what Pinero wants to come with here. Curveball. One two. Cold foul. How about that though? The last complete game shutout for Joel Pinheiro, 2003. That year he was 16 and 11. So arguably his best year. Right. Off speed pitch, two and two. Only 85 pitches tonight. Only 27 There's balls. Sinker right there. Get a ground ball. Get out of play. Even now executing, making good pitches down in the zone. You like Hop Power, don't you? Yeah. I thought he played well when we saw yes. him filling in for Bradley. Right, man. Saw him last year. Another sinker. Came up from Iowa. Swing and a miss and a strikeout. Fourth on the night for Pinheiro. Wonder who our Budweiser great player of the game might be. Budweiser, choice, the great huh? American lager. I don't know if you could come up with it, Dan. I'm going Brendan. No. Joel <laughs> Pinheiro. Well, I'll tell the, the fans here, the Cardinal fans at least like your choice as they're on their feet honoring Joel. Boy, this has been fun to watch. Soriano one for three. He was picked off though at first base by Molina. All around, it's been a complete effort by this Cardinals team. He was picked off to lead off the game. Then you got Derek Lee was erased after his single with a double play ball. Only stranded one. That was Fontenot with a two out double back in the fifth, the last base hit. 21 of 28 first pitch strikes and 41,000 on their feet and ready to erupt with this final strike or out. Oh and two. Slider away. Wants to bounce it. One and two. Still executing the game plan. 90 pitches thrown to this point, 62 of them strikes. One ball, two strikes. The slider again, still wants it down. He'll chase. One, two pitch. Popped up. Pujols giving chase and out of room. How about that effort? It's Albert racing as hard as he possibly could to try and snare that one. Club trying to turn around this losing streak in. Pinheiro has done everything possible. It was a good play game by the Cardinals. And the, it really, the Cubs have nothing to be embarrassed by either. The thing about the potential win tonight, they drew it against a lefty as well. That is big. And a good one. Slider one again. Strike away and one out away. Third consecutive slider. There it Swing is. And a miss. A complete game shutout for Joel Pinheiro. The Cardinals win it three to nothing and they take game one over the Cubs. His first complete game shutout since 2003.
The strikeout of Soriano to end it.